I am at the show 2024 with Ken Boyce of Cake Audio, who represents, among other brands, Vitas, Viva, Lancia, Albedo Cables. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ken is a home dealer in San Clemente, and I'm with proprietor of United Home Audio, Greg Barone, who's going to tell us about his new Apollo deck. Yeah, this is a new one, the latest uh, UHA deck. It's the Apollo. It's a little hard to keep track of the evolution of the changes in these models. How does this model differ specifically from the Ultima 5? The difference is pretty big. In other words, we went to whole, all new gain stages and EQ stages. They're much more robust, bigger the whole shoot and match. Well, um, let me stop you. How does that change the sound? It makes it more rich, more along the lines of a super deck in terms of gain and EQ. But of course, I can't fit, you know, in this chassis, uh, the huge devices that are in the super deck. That's why you have a tape transport. You have an outboard head amp, which amplifies the signal off the tape head. I'm, I'm just, and then the outboard power supply. This is actually the outboard power supply for the Ultima Apollo here. Um, so I can't, I don't have the real estate to fit all of the good stuff that's in the super deck. So this was a, a compromise. Um, and then quickly after putting all, getting, finally getting this, these gain and EQ stages on the, on the board, which was difficult. Then I realized, wait a second, these things are thirsty and hungry. And so that meant a whole redesign of the, uh, voltage regulators and how each, um, component was fed. On the super deck, every single EQ and, and every single gain stage has its own tap back to the power supply. So it doesn't share with anything. So I did the same thing on this one. Um, so it's a bunch of different changes that come together and give you, you know, tighter bass, more warmth, more realism. I mean, ultimately, when I started making these things 15 years ago, I made it for myself. And I'm still doing the same thing, okay? I make it for myself. If I think that there's a, a way to make something sound better, definitely gonna give it a shot, see what happens. Some things work out, some things don't. But again, on this, on this deck, I, I wanted to get as close as I could for somebody that only could uh, you know, accommodate a two box system. So with this, when you buy the Ultima Apollo, because of the hungry gain stages and the big uh, voltage regs, you have to use the outboard power supply, so it comes stock. How much is the Apollo machine? It's 55,000, which includes also the outboard power supply. And the Super Deck is how much now? 90,000 for playback. What is somebody getting sonically if he or she goes up to the Super Deck? Well, then you get all the bells and whistles because everything in there, like for example, the boards are, are a, um, a, sp a specific type of copper. Then there's gold, a layer of real gold above it and below it, and a, then a ceramic dielectric. But how do those bells and whistles translate to sound quality? What is the difference in sound characteristics when somebody moves up from the Apollo to the Super Deck? Everything just gets cleaner, clearer, more dynamic, and more 3D. That's basically what happens. And is there a change in tonal balance in any way? Uh, I think that it's, I think the super deck is a little more um, authoritative on the bass, a little bit. Um, and in the same token, you know, if you're really listening to something that's got some dynamics with it, it comes flying out at you. You really do, you do get it. But then in addition to that, there's a whole, there's completely different capacitors. The capacitors that, <coughs> that for the uh, super deck are just crazy. They're crazy things. In other words, when we, when we made them, um, we wanted a specific type of copper, a specific type of Teflon. But in addition to that, we also wanted gold leads uh, instead of copper. And we did not want tin sprayed on the end caps. And people weren't wild about spraying molten copper. But lo and behold, when Wilson Audio bought reliable capacitors then we went to Dwight Schmoot there and talked to him and said you know here's the design idea what do you think and he's like eh, we'll give it a stab and they did and they came out wonderful they're fantastic every time you make any change whatsoever in the tape decks it's quite audible and um, it just depends on 
getting the right components put together that are synergistic and that give you that real natural um, dynamic exciting experience that tape has the one thing i've always said is that there's an incredible amount of information on that tape you just got to get it off <laughs> greg thanks yep. ken how did you come to put together this particular portfolio of components why do you enjoy this combination of components for musical realism well this year i did something a little different than last year last year i also had the launch a 5.2s which feature the plasma tweeter where i was using a vetus integrated which um in fact, I saw a guy in the hall just now and said it was the best sound of the show last year. So it was, it was a great sound we had. This year, I just wanted to change it up a little bit. So we're featuring the Viva uh, 845, which is a single-ended triode using four 845 tubes. And, uh, you know, the sound is glorious. I mean, people ask which is better. I don't know that one is better than the other. It's just different. But the sound of the Viva is phenomenal. I mean, I really love it. You know, they're uh, kind of known for their headphone amps as well. So we have those um, at our shop, and they're glorious. Um, so I'm also showing the, uh, the Vetus SCD025 um, transport DAC combination player. And then um, all the cabling is Albedo silver, which is phenomenal. Um, and then we're using the Hi-Fi Stay rack system, which is modular. And you could get these columns in different heights, and you could kind of build it, you know, as, as needed. Um, but overall, I think we're getting a great sound this year. What is unique about the Albedo cables, the silver conductor? Well, they extrude their own silver, uh, and they, so they make all their own wire. Everything's made in-house. Um, one of the partners there is uh, what used to be a jeweler, so he's very uh, handy at handcrafting things. So all these cables are handmade. Sonically, you know, when we've listened and A-B'd different cables through the years, the Albedo sonically to me has a... Uh, more of a three-dimensional holographic presentation is what I'm hearing. Um, so I've had really good experience uh, listening to it, and my customers really love it. Um, I won't compare brands, but I recently had a customer who had, you know, the top-end cable that everyone would know, and traded it all in to me and bought a full loom of Albedo just based on one XLR cable. Here. What difference did he hear? What was the sonic quality that attracted him to the Albedo? The cables that he had were top notch and compared to the Albedo he told me that it was more holographic and the sound stage was more open and it was more transparent and you know a lot of times I think in this industry when people hear that you're using silver as a conductor they think that it's going to be bright or too analytical and not musical, but it's really not true with Albedo. It's, uh, it doesn't have those characteristics at all. It's very musical, very smooth. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan.